Hey guys, welcome back to FIFA 23 Brighton Career Mode, episode number 32. And we're going to start off with the four games again, uh, trying to finish the month of December, heading into the January transfer window. Not looking very good in the league. Last time we did check, we were sitting at 7th again. Uh, what we're trying to do this season is to probably earn ourselves in the European spot again. Uh, potentially in the Europa League, I don't think being in the Champions League are going to be realistic with the squad that we have. Yes, we have a very young squad, but by no means we are at that level to you know elevate us into the next level. But this episode or this video is pretty much talking about Kaiseido Saga number two. And before going to Kaiseido, we all know that what. Uh, McAllister, it's it's gone right now. Uh, I think he has signed for Liverpool in the four-year deal, five-year deal, and it was um, yeah. I think everybody saw the coming. Uh, the Serbia said it uh, in the last game or last two games of the season, saying that McAllister is going to leave, Caicedo is going to leave, and yeah, those are the two star players that are you know like he said, are able or capable to play in the next level. And just like that, I'm sure Liverpool did trigger the release clause of Ma McAllister. And at one point, it was between Liverpool and United. And, um, well, McAllister went to uh, Liverpool in the end. I'm sure Arsenal didn't make a bit of a contact with the agent of McAllister, or at least Arsenal thought about uh, having McAllister as an option. As our number 10 or as number 8. But you know what? I'm sure Edu is you know, eyeing for somebody else <laughs> at the moment. So that's fine. But again, McAllister is gone. You know, going to Liverpool. Good move for him. You know, the World Cup winner. Had a pretty good year for Brighton. Uh, especially that, uh, that penalty against United. I was watching that in the cafe. I was studying. It was... Ooh... I remember that moment, 95th minute, out of nowhere, there's a penalty call in the box. Um, and uh, when you look at the replay again, I think it was Luke Shaw who put his hand up. Uh, there was contact with his hand with the ball, leading to that penalty. And McAllister, you know, with all the pressure at his back. And I'm sure that was the moment where, um, I'm sure that was the moment where, you know, they're, they have the chance or they're pushing for that, you know, Europa League spot. And, you know, shooting that penalty in a moment like that, I think he literally smashes that one. To the top left corner shows how, you know, how good of a player he is, McAllister. And I'm surprised that he hasn't, you know, made a, you know, early move to a bigger club before. But right now, at least right now, he is pretty much gone. Good for his career. And right now... Uh, Kaiseido, uh, saga number number two, and we know that I'm trying to make it I'm trying to make it quick to be honest, but we all know that Kaiseido was on the verge of leaving the club. Even you know he he made a statement himself or submitted a transfer request on Instagram by himself, uh, saying that he wanted a move, and somehow the board you know uh, you know rejected or denied it. Arsenal did submit a 75 million, uh, 75 million, uh, 75 million pound bid on him, but unfortunately it was rejected. And later on, after the saga was kind of died down, the Reds, well, not the Red Sox, the uh, um, I think Brighton did sign a uh, uh, new contract, not a contract extension, but more like improving the offer, trying to protect themselves from a future deal, and they did that. And right now we are heading into the uh, another real saga for Caicedo. Right now, I think two you know front runners at the moment with Chelsea and Arsenal. Um, I think right now he is ranging, um, I think ranging around eighty million for for this player. But Brighton might be asking a little bit more, a hundred million. Uh, actually, yeah, yeah. Brighton might be asking for a hundred million, but right now, what what scares me the most is, again, Chelsea have all the financial power. We all know how it went. It went horribly, horribly for top bully. 
And I think the fact that, you know, Levi Covell, uh, Colwell, uh, he had a very good season for uh, for Brighton this season. And Brighton was thinking about signing him permanently for $30 million. The bid was rejected again. Uh, you know, that, that, uh, that makes a lot of sense at the moment that, you know, the deal between Chelsea and Brighton could be struck. Chelsea want Caicedo and Brighton wants Levi Colwell which means that you know this deal is this deal is pretty much uh it's on the line. I mean Arsenal have to offer, you know, cash up front plus a little bit of add-on and Chelsea just need to do a bit of a exchange player plus a bit of the fee and that's how the deal will be struck. But again, personal preference, I felt like uh, Caicedo, personal preference, I think he might go for Arsenal because of the Champions League status that Arsenal have. And Chelsea do not have it. Of course, all they have is money. So right now, we are in June 5th, still kind of uh, waiting for you know for the news. Hopefully, Arsenal do sign Caicedo. I think he's a very good player. I saw him you know, play against Arsenal uh, at home, the 3-0 defeat. It was uh, it was a pain in the butt for a lot of Arsenal fans, but Caicedo was simply tremendous. The fact that he uh, took down Martinelli, and uh, well, if he took down Martinelli, the only way for Arsenal fans or anybody to forgive him from that challenge, that horrific challenge, is that you know what, Arsenal just need to um, uh, well, Caicedo just need to join Arsenal. That's it. But right now, it's all rumors and news, and we won't get a confirmation until uh, Fabrizio Romano, Romano uh, saying, here we go. So back to the gameplay right here, beating Chelsea, drawing Bournemouth, and right now uh, getting a win against Aston Villa. What a way to, uh, to, to kind of redeem ourselves, actually. Uh, just now, we received the news. Hulse check. Uh, with a broken toe, three months. Uh, he's gonna be out for three months, and that is going to be um, that's gonna that is going to be very very tough to be honest. Host uh, check again. Uh, one of the one of the first signs that we have. One of the players that I really do enjoy using in this career mode. Uh, can play both striker and center attacking midfielder. Doesn't necessarily have the pace. But certainly, he does have the uh, he does have the skill, technique, quality to be a good play for us at least. And look at the heights difference between Lamptey and Matt Turner right there. You just got you just gotta love to see it. Mateta is pretty much our unsung hero. Uh, scored two goals in his last three Premier League games. Again, all you know, all those three goals were coming from you know getting that extra goal to seal the winner. Right here, playing against the uh, Arsenal side. Jesus is no longer with the club. And just like that, four players we saw just now. Uh, none of them, it's current Arsenal players. And sometimes, I hope that the uh, you know FIFA is going to do something about the, the transfer. I think some of them is quite unrealistic as well. And, of course, the lineup as well. Right here, 40th minute. We are down by one goal, unfortunately. And somehow, a Jacob Ramsey. Find it back at the net right there. Just good, very simple, you know, pass and move, pass and move between strikers, midfielders, defenders, whomever was there. Just like that, Jacob Ramsey buries that one. one nothing. Very good finish as well. Matt Turner's in goal. No clue why. Um, no clue why the game decided to go for that way. 68 minutes in. Here comes Alex Scott. Take a shot right there. Again, Alex Scott, um, haven't been using him quite, you know, lately recently. I think right now we have three. Three very good attacking midfielders. We still have Torred uh, on the bench. And right here, here comes Jacob Ramsey playing a 1-2 play with Estupian on the, uh, in the middle. Back to uh, Jacob Ramsey running down the left and flank. Crosses in the middle or passes in the middle to Gilhar. Again, this is why you don't put a backup goalkeeper in a game like this. Because that was a huge mistake by Matt Turner. Could have easily kept that one away. Instead... Very weak hand, weak handle, and just, just all you know, just, uh, just overall. And Joe Gilhar scoring the winner, just like that again. It was a very easy save when you look at it. There's no power behind the shot, but again, uh, we just need to thank Mac Turner for that. Look at the replay once again. Yeah, straight at him, but very, very weak hand. And uh, 
whoever that number 18 is. I feel bad for him. Just ran straight to the pole. Got nothing in the end, just like that. You know, we beat Arsenal uh, 2-1 in a very dramatic fashion in the last five minutes of the game there. Scoring quite a lot of, uh, you know, you know, uh, you know, winners. You guys didn't say winners. Just like that, winning three games, and we still have half of the games to go. 34 points sitting at top four, sitting at fourth right now to, uh, at the moment, sharing uh, sharing the same point with Leicester City, certainly climbing ourselves back again. Uh, with close check being gone for three months, we might have to find something in the January transfer window. I don't know how much we have in the in the financial department we certainly have to figure that out because we're heading to the january transfer window hopefully making a few signings and uh hopefully making a few signings and you know give us an extra leverage to uh you know t hit the top four even top six if if uh if the game's allowed arsenal look look at it right there six five and eight 23 points sitting at 13th certainly uh Thank God it's not in real life, isn't it? So thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like this video. Subscribe to my channel. And I'll see you guys in a bit.